Hey folks, Dr. Mike here from Renaissance Periodization. Welcome back. Last week, we talked about my bodybuilding transformation, the actual diet and training I did to get ultra lean and super dry for the first time in my life. Yay. This time, we're going to talk about the peak week and what it took to actually take a very lean physique and make it a lean, dry, and full physique on the stage. Good news. There's just one chart to look at the entire time, but we're not going to rush into it. We're going to talk about it one thing at a time. So first of all, calories. My maintenance during this time was right around 3,750 to 4,000 calories. Let's just call it 4,000 calories. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, remember the show is Saturday, okay? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday is 3,000 calories roughly. That's a deficit. That encourages fat loss, okay? The last bits of fat loss that we're doing. On Wednesday and Thursday, the calories go up to 8,500 and 6,900 respectively. What? That is part of the carbohydrate load, which will become apparent in just a quick second. And then Friday, we have to do two things. One is dry out a ton. And another one is get the waste as small as possible so that you eat very little food that day in order to have the essentially GI tract be bereft of contents. And then you look nice and tight. So just over 2,000 calories on Friday. Good news is you don't actually get hungry on Friday because after eating 8,500 and then 6,900 calories the two days before, you're kind of done eating for a little while. So it's, it's a good thing. Now, next column is protein. Protein is 350 grams. Why? Because we're keeping carbs artificially low on those days. Proteins and fats have to come up uh, to make the difference. Okay. So Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, it's 350 grams of protein. And then on Wednesday and Thursday, it's only 300 grams of protein because we're carbohydrate loading. We're not protein loading. We keep the protein relatively normal. On Friday, the protein is 200 grams just because we cut off eating like at 6 p.m. Friday or whatever. So there's only so much protein you get in until you have to stop eating. Carbs. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we're doing lots of physical activity and doing the last bits of training, and it's 80 grams of carbs. Yes, that is incredibly low carb. Yes, that leads to the muscles being very, very deflated. It is a purposeful depletion. You will notice, and we'll talk about them at the same time, the fats are at 150 grams a day. That's a lot of fats, which means that we're not ultra, super hungry those days. We're not accumulating a ton of fatigue. That would be a mistake that late in the game. And we're just low carbing, high level of fat, so that we can have a little bit of glycogen depletion to make us sensitive for the reload that begins on Wednesday. On Wednesday, it is 1,600 grams of carbs. That's right. You read that correctly. And then on Thursday, 1,200 with 100 grams of fats on both days. That's how those calories jump up. Calculation-wise, that's what Mr. Jared Feather told me I should be eating in order to fill out. I got pretty full. I probably could have gotten even fuller. So Jared, but Jared's numbers were the highest I had ever seen, and even they weren't enough, so to speak. So it was great, great call on Jared's part. I would have eaten way fewer and not gotten as much muscle fullness. Eating the 1,600 grams of carbs, I'll say that came mostly so I didn't have to reduce my salt at this point. So plenty of pasta, some uh, some great French breads, some white rice, protein from shakes and lean meats and chicken and stuff like that. I even had some frozen yogurt. It was a really good time. Uh, so eating that many carbs is really fun when you're starving to death. Some GI distress, but nothing, nothing too crazy. And then, of course, on Friday, you're trying to get as dry as possible so you get the carbs again. So it's 50 grams of carbs. Friday is... Not the most fun thing in the world, but you get to see your midsection shrink down and you become very dry. So it's, it's a good time anyway. All right. And then, sorry, uh, the fats, uh, we are, so again, on Friday, one thing I forgot to mention was, yeah, it's 50 grams of carbs, very low, but it's 150 grams of fat. Why? Because we don't want to be insanely catabolic and fatigue-inducing. So we have plenty of fats through that half day of eating so that you're never really hungry on Friday, and that's very good. You never really have a ton of fatigue. It doesn't interfere with your sleep, et cetera. Now, what's going on with water? Six liters. I normally drink four to five liters of water per day, maybe like five on average. Six liters of water Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, a little bit more than normal so that your body, essentially almost all of its pathways are sort of like uh, they get into a diuretic position. They're like, yeah, like we can give away all this, uh, all of our internal water. They don't store water much because there's so much coming in. On Wednesday, you take the water down, I took the water down to five liters, a little bit less, still plenty, because you need lots of water to get those carbohydrates into the muscle and store. And then on Thursday, three liters, much less water. And then on Friday, as close to zero liters as possible. So I, I fill up a tiny fraction of a shaker 
with a little bit of sippy water and I use that throughout the day and I, use, I don't even use most of it, just enough to get the food down. So the water is nice and high and then it goes bloop, just like that over the course of several days. Meanwhile, the carbohydrates are being loaded, so less water coming in under the skin, more water being sucked out from under the skin and from everywhere else into the muscles makes for a very muscular look, but a very dry look. And at the same time, sodium is operating on very similar parameters. It's just pushed a little bit after water. So once you make the water changes, a few hours later, you make the sodium change. Sodium is 6,000 milligrams, which is for me a pretty typical amount of sodium. Remember, sodium is safe in a huge range, especially if you're not salt sensitive to blood pressure, which I'm not. 6,000 milligrams all the way up and including Wednesday, which makes Wednesday easy. I can eat mostly normal foods, makes the carb up easy, reduces the diet fatigue, reduces stress. On Thursday, I continue the carbs, but salt is significantly reduced, as is water. So it's 2,000 milligrams that day, which isn't crazy, but I got to choose my foods wisely. A bit more plain white rice, a bit more rice cakes, not as much of the fun foods. And then Friday, as close to zero milligrams of sodium as possible, which is actually possible to, to achieve if you were very close, if you have, I had an unflavored whey protein, which was god awful, but it had almost no sodium in it. I had rice cakes with zero sodium and I had natural nut butter, natural peanut butter with no sodium. Not, not exactly the most fun eating day, but I will say through especially Thursday and definitely Friday, and then the rest of Saturday is a bit more complicated. That's show day. I'll talk about that another time. During that time, after I would eat, I would get incredibly thirsty. But then 30 minutes to an hour later, I actually felt completely normal. And it would go through cycles like that the entire time. I thought, fuck, I have to pull a cord on this. I'm too thirsty. I'm dying. I'm dehydrated. And then I would like go to the bathroom and just pee plenty of clear fluid. And I was like, eh, okay, I'm not that dehydrated. It's not even yellow yet. So I'm good to go. And then I sort of quote unquote suffered through. It wasn't terribly difficult. And then Saturday morning I woke up and I was like, oh shit. Okay, now we roll. Now we're dry. And then Saturday night, I get even drier, et cetera. That's another story for another time. But for now, I don't want you guys to take this, and I'm sure you won't, um, as a how-to manual of exactly the things to do. What I want you guys to do is see this in patterns. The pattern is the calories take a bump during carb load and go back down to let the GI tract shrink down. The pattern is protein is kept roughly the same. The pattern is carbohydrates go through a depletion and loading phase and then through a slightly lower phase at the end to make everything dry once again. Fats are kept very, very stable almost the entire time. A little fewer fats on the carb load to get more carbs in per any given unit of hunger. Water starts out really high, stays high, and then drops towards the end. Sodium starts high, stays high a little bit longer than water, and then drops off towards the end. That is one of the ways to do a peak. There are many other ways that work. I'll probably do a slightly different one for my next show, but this fundamentally is something that worked, first of all, which is good, and will work in the future if you try to replicate it with similar ideas. Got questions? Got comments? Put them in the comments below, and we'll try to get to them. Like, subscribe, share, tell your grandma about me. Say, Grandma, there's this channel that talks about technical bodybuilding. You have to subscribe, Grandma. You have to subscribe, Grandma. You got to, a lot of times, talk louder because Grandma might not hear well. In any case, see you next time. Hey, guys, did you miss the video before this where I actually talk about the dietary changes I made for the 17 weeks that I lost fat for this bodybuilding show? Click on it right here. Check it out.